Hello guys, here's another video for you. Today we're drawing SCP-4975 times up. And this drawing was requested by one of my fans. And this fan is called Divine Authorities. He wanted me to draw this SCP, SCP-4975 times up. And it's a bird-like creature. Um, you can't see it, you can only hear it. It starts with you hearing clicking sounds. Like ticking sounds almost. That's why it's called Time's Up. And uh, you hear the ticking, but you don't see where it's coming from. You don't see anything at all that would suggest that there's a clock nearby or anything. And this will keep up for. Uh, 10 months around until the clicking stops and when the clicking stops your time is up more or less you um, you will get attacked by this horrible creature it's one of the scariest and creepiest SCPs I've seen I thought I thought the shy guy was creepy. I thought the plague doctor when day breaks was creepy, but this one takes it all like it's a really, really screwed up SCP. And the clicking comes from this bird-like creature SCP. And the clicking is from its neck rotating. It has a really long neck in segments and um, it, it rotates its head and when, when it stops rotating it attacks you and it eats you more or less. It, it eats you up and it doesn't have to, doesn't have to eat for a long time after that. And when it's killed you, it turns invisible, so no one can see it. And, and yeah, it turns invisible. And starts feeding on you. And then it disappears. And then it comes back. to start the ticking pro process again on another person. So it has this long, really long leg, uh, neck and this spindly arms and spindly legs. It's really creepy looking. There's some really cool fan art of this uh, SAP. So, if you haven't seen this before, I suggest you go look up some fan art and then come back to come back to this one. So my take on this is you kind of go insane from this ticking, the constant ticking in your head. Like it's always there when you try to sleep, when you try to relax, when you when you play games, when you do whatever. It's always there. This bird haunts you, and it will drive you crazy until until you die, basically. 
So my idea is there's this guy, this guy here, he's holding his ears, trying to avoid the ticking. But as you can see, that's not gonna go very well for him. And he's gonna get attacked by this creature. So we're doing a very loose sketch here, very loose. As we usually do when we draw. So the neck is gonna be in segments like this. Something like that. So the bird is kind of planning on attacking. Uh, let's do the shading. We have the base line, line art down. So let's work on the shading here. So when the ticking stops, your time is up, more or less. And it, it has this tail also, can't forget, get the tail. How do we place the tail? Maybe this way or that way? Let's go with this way. Maybe it's like grasping him, kinda, like so. Yeah, let's remove this. Let's use the stomp pan. We smoothen out all these lines. I'm gonna do dramatic lighting here, so it's gonna like a spotlight coming from above, hitting casting shadows down below so really dramatic really really scary having really fun drawing this and uh, thank you guys so much for commenting and and interacting with my videos in different ways. It's like you liking or commenting or sharing. I really appreciate it so much. So thank you for that. It really means more than you can think. This is looking a bit messy, but it's that's usually how it looks. With most of my drawings in the beginning, it's messy. We're trying to get the feel of it. Just, it's allowed to be messy at this point. So, 
it's okay. Yeah, th there's something about like, this is clearly bird skeleton. If you've ever seen a bird skeleton, they're really freaky looking like an ostrich or something like that. It looks like an alien or something. It really gets under my skin when I see that. Like a flamingo skin, for example, look that up. So creepy. Now we just add some hues here and there where we want it to be darker. So this guy is clearly in pain from all the ticking and the talking. which is understandable. You would go crazy hearing the ticking sound constantly. So I don't blame the guy. Do not blame the guy. The hair, not too much, just a little bit. Creases on the shirt a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, just to get the shape of of things. Like so. Give this bird some more definition. It has a clear rib cage, very distinct rib cage. I'm gonna make that a little bigger. And this part is gonna be really skinny, really, really skinny, like so. Just fill in these segments a little bit, like so. And it's gonna have like this sad expression, like you can't read what it's thinking really. It's just inhuman and killing, killing machine. Inhuman monster. See, like this. Maybe some nostrils. We go through it with the stone pan once more. Once more. Give it a rinse with this wonderful tool. Absolutely wonderful tool to get smoother shadows. Something like that, kinda. I like where we're going with the face. It's semi-realistic. We're gonna add the um, line art to this. Because we're not going for realism. This is my style, which is, I guess, semi-realistic. So then we're gonna go through with the 
erase the pan and clean up some of this. Clean up a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And before you know it, we are done with this drawing. Yeah, really clear glowing eyes like this. Absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. We're gonna try and work smart on this one, smarter, and try to do the line art last. Because there's been a few instances now where I've had to go through the line art many times because I've accidentally erased it by brushing it with my hand or with the stump pen. So we're doing it this way this time. Just trying to be as effective as possible in drawing. That's what you want to strive for. Try and have a very effective workflow without without affecting the quality of your your art. If you can find that the problems while drawing and minimum minimize the problems then you're on your way to some great art. All right. Starting to look good here. Uh, we can go through this now with with the uh, ink, not ink, the graphite pencil, the the thicker graphite pencil. Is what I meant. So let's do that. So sad, creepy eyes. And if you want your recipe drawn, like usual, you can comment on my video and I'll put it on my to-do list and I will draw it. Uh, we have many requests now which is super fun. I'm so happy you guys enjoyed this series. But I'm checking off this to-do list. So eventually I'll come to yours. Just, just be patient. And I mean, we're gonna be posting every day. So we're gonna get there eventually. Just give this some form like this, so it looks segmented. Like so. Yeah, this guy's time is up for sure. He's gonna be eaten. This creature's next lunch or dinner. Let's do the rib cage. It's a clear distinction be between the rib cage, the 
the arms, the neck, there's like, they're very segmented. Like so. Like so, this other arm here, and these arms, they have too many limbs. This one has that amount of limbs. This one has this amount of limbs. All right, and then this part, it's gonna be really skinny. We make it even skinnier than in the sketch. So we remove this part here. Like so. So imagine this, this is the joint maybe of the leg, I don't know. And it's going like that out of the, out of the drawing. I don't know, should we give it the belly button? Let's do that. Yeah, that's, that's freaky. <laughs> the hair. Yeah, I'm not a bird person, not at all, like, there's something, can't really trust birds, I feel like, you can't really cuddle with birds, they'll poke your eye out if you get too close, they'll sing all day, scream all day, they'll learn all, all your bad words. I remember this store owner who who had a parrot in uh, the hometown where I grew up in and we used to go there to look at the animals because we as kids we were really like really loved animals and this one time we go there, this guy has an eye patch on one side of his eye. We're like, hmm. My my dad asked like what happened. Or something like that, I can't really remember. And the parrot had like poked out his eye. I don't know the full story, but something like that had happened. So freaky. So 
So yeah, I don't really trust birds that much. Here's the tail. Here's the other leg. Here's the guy's arm, like so. All right. Now we do some more shading. We're done with the lines now, so I'm gonna do a quick sharpening of this. Take your pen. Like so. So we have to think where the light is coming from at all times here. So this pelvis area is gonna be in darkness. Tail is gonna be in darkness. This rib cage, you guessed it, gonna be in darkness. The head is kind of casting a shadow over this area. And the neck is casting a shadow on itself, like so. Like so, and we're gonna go through these lines one last time with the stomp pen. And the head is casting a shadow, like so, on the torso. So yeah, this torso is gonna be in darkness. There's not gonna be too much light coming here. It's gonna be on his shoulders and not too much at all here. Even this part. Like so. And we go through with the stomp pan again. 
very loosely. You don't apply any pressure. Just very loosely. Some of the highlights are gonna get dulled up. But that's fine. It's completely fine. Because we're gonna re add the highlights. And this is catching a lot of the ink now, or the graphite. I don't know why I keep saying ink. The graphite, so it's acting kind of like a pencil now. Just like this. Yeah, we gave that a nice wash and gonna rinse off the pan here a bit from that the ink it sucked up the graphite i don't know why i say ink like so We go through with the erase eraser pen again. I don't know if we're gonna add the background to this. Um, I think we want, it's it's kind of, there's a lot going on with the creature, the limbs, the tail, the head, the eyes, so I think we're gonna skip the background. Yes, this is going well. We're done with that. Now we can re-add re the highlights here. And we're gonna add details with the razor pen. Like we can add highlights to the beak. It's gonna be a bit shiny. Like so this part is catching some, some light. I imagine these are kind of glossy, glossy, nasty bits here. So slowly, slowly adding detail here. Same to this guy. So we add highlights to the thin parts of the face, the nose, the lips, uh, shin, stuff like that. And the hair is gonna catch a lot of that light because it's 
translucent, like something like that. And we're gonna work a bit on the neck here, give it some texture. It's kind of wrinkly, I imagine, wrinkly. Um, not quite skeleton y, but it's very, very thin skin over it, so it's. Very thin skin, very translucent and... So it's catching some of the light coming here. Like so... We're gonna, like I said, dramatic lighting. This one, so we add a... Rim light, it's called. Around the edge here. The rim, kinda. I don't know why it's called rim light, but someone much smarter than me knows the answer to that, so. Google is your friend. Uh, like so. And this shirt here is gonna catch some of the light. <laughs> and the legs are gonna catch the light. It's, if you know how light works and casts shadows on things, then you have a pretty good head start with drawing. You have a really, actually really good head start on drawing but it takes a long time to learn how light works that's one of the most difficult parts to learn in drawing learning how to draw light and shadows Yeah, I'm having to clean off some graphite off my hand because I'm smudging it, but it's fine. It's fine. I'd rather do it this way than using a brush. Give it some scars, some texture. And then we fill with some Graphite. And don't worry, we're gonna fill in the rib cages here, all the ribs. This is just we're adding a little bit of texture. Yeah. 
if you come this far in the video guys please subscribe to my channel be part of this art community and make sure to comment like and subscribe and comment your SAP and I'll draw it I'm doing all the fan requests now and I have a total of maybe 10 10 requests now or more I don't know exactly I think it's 10 or something like that 10 ish so a post each day that would be 10 days and then I'm out of uh, SAPs to draw so keep commenting keep this alive keep it going keep the dream going maybe 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 we add some uh, some background actually a little bit we can take from this from what we have already just add a bit a little bit nothing special just a slight gradient and when I'm doing this it's picking up ink from the drawing which is exactly what we want like so we go through the highlights a little bit just want these eyes to be really glowy big glowing orbs Just give these highlights their whiteness again, just like this. Maybe he has some texture also on his shirt. He has seen better days for sure. All right, we go through the ribs. So we go through this, re-add some of the high, uh, high and low line arts. So the lower part here gets a bit thicker lines, just to give it more weight. Very subtle, you can't can barely see it but it's 
a bit thicker. This is gonna be thicker also, because he's in the he's in the foreground. Because he's, he's going to be kind of in the focus and you can make it focused by adding thick lines. Like so. So, and you want to be careful in this part so you don't add thick lines where you want them to be thin, etc. So, just Adding line art is something you really want to be careful with. Speaking of, let me sharpen my pen here a bit. Not going well, but like so. Sometimes you can be quite unlucky with sharpening your pen. It can break or it can break and it's not really something you want, but it's also something you don't have a lot of control over. It is what it is. It happens to everyone. Maybe you're too aggressive when you're using the sharpener and bam, it's broken. I can't really give a tip on that, how to, how to sharpen a pen. Like this. Okay, you see we gave the eyes a bit more a bit more detail. Just by adding a few black lines around the eyes, we gave it a bit more focus and detail. nostrils and you see I jump from different parts of the drawing working on the neck then going to the nostrils uh, going back to this guy like that's how I work when I draw quite comfortable with that So 
add some more texture here. Yeah, this is going to be a bit darker. Same with this, the pelvis area. It's not going to get a lot of light. This is going to catch some of that light also, actually. Add a rim light here to the arm, like so. So we've been drawing for 51 minutes now, which is awesome. We're just now adding small, small details. And small shadows here and there. Obviously the beak is gonna have some wear and tear since it's used to kill. Like so. work on the rib cage a bit more not really a lot to say now just adding detail and slowly, slowly, we'll get to a point where we feel happy with the detail level. And as with all the SAPs, I do research before I draw. I look up images, I watch YouTube videos about them, just to get as much information as possible. And the more reference you have, the better it is for you to make your own interpretation of the character in your head that goes for for all drawings not just SAPs all drawings in general research research anyone who says oh I can draw that from the top of my head like Ask a person to draw a tiger who has never seen a tiger before. It's gonna be impossible for them. 
And if they say they can draw a tiger from memory, then you can be sure they have drawn a lot of tigers or done a lot of research. Something like this. We're just gonna keep adding to this until we're happy. Everything has to have an even amount of detail. You don't want one part to be full of detail and then some other parts be lacking. So try to be consistent with that. And if you want the eye to focus on a particular part of your drawing, then you can add detail to that part, extra detail, and that will make it look more in focus, kinda. Shirt is going down a little bit more here. Like so, like this. At first, I was thinking uh, the guy was sleeping, gonna be sleeping in his bed. But then I was thinking he wouldn't be able to sleep because of the ticking. So, and like th that the SCP was. Um, in the ceiling over his bed, kinda. That was my idea at first. But that wouldn't make sense because he would be hearing the ticking and he would see the creature kinda above his head. I don't know. I switched that idea up pretty fast. And went with this instead because he's clearly going crazy from from all this sticking like make it go away make it go away kind of that type of expression i hope you guys can learn a thing or two from my narration while drawing that's my plan and if you happen to be drawing with me please show me your drawings like I would love to see what you guys draw that would be awesome something like this I think we're almost coming up to the end now been around an hour now 58 minutes which is where what I plan with this I don't want to extend it more than that um, I know many people don't have time to watch longer YouTube videos but I think an hour of your day is fair enough And if you don't have that, you can always check the short video that I will be posting the day after I plan. Uh, the day after I, I posted my regular video, I'll post the uh, shorts video, so I won't post them the same day. Because it's quite a lot of work to both be editing the normal video and then the shorts video in one day. So. Just so I don't go crazy with editing, because it takes quite a long time to process the videos and add music and render them out and not to speak of like uploading to YouTube, it takes so long. One hour YouTube video takes maybe two hours to upload, so yeah. I'm glad I have a decent PC to do it relatively fast. 
this. Coming up to the end here, this video. And again, just want to thank all my fans for watching my video and leaving your nice comments. I think we're pretty much done with this one. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.